Come and stand to your feet and worship with us. Come on, will you put your hands together? Come on, sing it out. Go on. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. It's the only way for me. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I want to be on it. It's a narrow road, and the mercy is wide, because you're good on your promise. Come on, sing it out. I take you at your word. You spoke. You spoke, and the chaos fell in line. And I know, 'cause I've seen it in my life. It's a narrow road that leads to life, but I wanna be on it. It's a narrow road. Just one word, the darkness has 
Gang, on the, on the faith of that right there, I, I got up here and woke up early as always, but with an urgency, just there were people on my mind that have been given very difficult diagnosis, cancer, brain tumors, uh, predictions, and uh, this, this was the scripture that was on my heart. Uh, you guys all know it, no weapon that is formed against me will prosper and every tongue that accuses you in judgment will be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and his vindication. And I want to speak to some, so I know Greg 
uh, is in a hospital right now with, with just had a brain surgery. I know there's folks here that are fighting cancer battles. And uh, I just want to say this. We can believe. That word does not have to intimidate us. I know they're hard diagnoses. And one of the things that I, I felt it was important to speak to was every word spoken against you. That's not from the doctor. That's that whisper that goes on in your head that says you're going to die from this. God's not going to be able to heal you from this. Lots of other people have died, so God's not going to do your thing. All those whispers, God says, no, we, we can cast those down. So I want to believe God for big miracles. The ones that we go, I don't know if he can handle us. Oh, trust me, he can handle this. So I want to speak with great confidence. Would you agree with me for the folks right now that are in battles? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus, there is nothing that doesn't bow at your name. Every cancer has to bow. Every cancerous tumor has to dry up. There's not one person you ever touched, God, that their disease was not healed. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for Greg. I pray for, for, for Dale. I pray for Debbie. I pray for every person hosting something that has a, a, an intimidating sound to it and words have been spoken in their minds. Right now we come against those words and we condemn those words. And Father God, I thank you, Lord. You said you would take vindication. This is my vindication. I won't stand for it. The inheritance of the sons and the daughters of God is divine healing. So right now, God, I thank you that you, God, watch over your word to see to it that it gets done what you sent it to get done. So I speak in that authority. Every person facing every illness, be healed. Every tumor, every tumor, dry up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
worship your worthy name. We worship your mighty name, Jesus. We worship your mighty name. Come on, let's sing his name this morning. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh my God will never fail. Yes. Oh my God will never fail. Come on, sing. I'm gonna 
you so much that you are our our strong tower we can run into, Father. I thank you that you are our defender, Lord. I thank you that you're turning things around for us this morning. Father, this morning there's somebody that has been carrying around these weights. They feel tied down to something, they feel stuck. But I thank you, Lord God that you're turning things around right now. I thank you that you're breaking those chains right now in Jesus' name. You are the victor. You are the triumphant one. And I love you and we worship you, Lord, this morning. We couldn't wait to be here on a Sunday, Lord God, in your house. You're so worthy to be praised. And we give you all the glory and all the honor that's due to you. We bow down to you and we surrender all to you, Lord God. In Jesus, the name above all names, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, amen. Come on, church. Say amen. Say amen like you believe it. He's working it out for us. He's turning around. Thank you, Lord. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Monica Friedel and I get to serve on the Connect team. And I'm honored to be here with you. And on behalf of Pastor Randy and Pastor Stacy and the church, the Crossing Church family, we just wanna say good morning, we love you. And we're so glad that you got in the car, no matter what happened this morning, and that you're here, you made it, okay? You made it and you're here and we're so glad you're here. Well, we have some video announcements we wanna share with you this morning, but before we do, I want you to turn around to two or three people around you, and I want you to look them in the eye and say, God is turning it around for you this morning. Amen? God bless you. Welcome to The Crossing. We're so glad you're here. I'm Ashley and here are your video announcements. Today is Life Group Launch Sunday. Here at The Crossing, we believe that life is meant to be lived in a local biblical community. That's why we encourage everyone to join a life group. Joining a life group is a great way to connect with others, grow in your faith, and experience the power of community. Finding a life group is easy. To find one that's right for you, you can meet with our life group leaders outside at the Breezeway following the service. They'll be happy to answer any questions and help you connect to a group. If you're joining us in person, take the life group stamp card found at every leader's table. Have five different leaders initial it and drop it off at the connect desk where you'll be entered in a drawing to win a prize. If you're joining us online, head to thecrossing.cc slash groups to find all of the life groups meeting this semester. Ladies, it's time to get the girls together for our Women's Table Talk Breakfast on Saturday, September 23rd. This Table Talk, we're also launching the Ornament Exchange Ticket Sale. Wear your favorite Christmas shirts and join us at 9 a.m. as we kick off our favorite season. Child Care for Children ages 0 to 10 is available upon registration at thecrossing.cc slash women. We can't wait to spend time with you and encourage each other in God's word. Here at The Crossing, our vision is to restore every person to God and the life he created them to live. One way we accomplish this is by making sure every person is connected to a life-giving biblical community. If you're a first time guest or you've been coming here for a while and would like to get connected in our community, I wanna encourage you to check out the Connect card found in the seat back pocket in front of you. Fill out this card and drop it off at the Connect desk in the lobby after service. And if you're joining us online, you can fill out the same Connect card on our website at thecrossing.cc slash connect. Once turned in, our connections team will reach out to you this week to discuss your interests and find the best community for you here at The Crossing. 
to stay up to date on everything that's going on at The Crossing. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Let's stand to our feet and please help me welcome our senior pastor, Pastor Randy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. Good morning to all of y'all. It's going to be a good day. Everybody say it's going to be a good day. It's already been a good day, man. It's going to be a good day. Praise God. Well, yeah, so you heard the announcements there. Those of you that are here and you're looking for a place to kind of connect and you came here thinking, I don't want to do that groups thing. I want to encourage you. I just want to push you. Go out there and look at some of the groups and give it a shot. Give it a shot. A lot of folks are involved in groups and it's a great way to build friendships. And so please, I just, I, I encourage you. It's a big part of who, who we are. We are in a series about money. Everybody say money. money. I did a bunch of, a, I did a bunch of, a, Look at, watch last week's message. Just watch last week's message, okay? If, you, if this is your first time to the series, watch last week's message. Uh, I, I, I have no apologies for talking about money. There's nothing that uh, touches our lives more, but I, I understand that uh, when, a, when a preacher talks about money, uh, something changes in the room. So I, I just want to encourage you in that. When I watch, uh, sometimes I watch on, on Christian TV and somebody takes 15 of their 30 minute, uh, you know, of the 30 minutes they have to, to do ministry, they, they take 15 minutes taking the, the, the offering. I, I feel the same thing. I start questioning motives and all that. So I, I just want you to know the beautiful thing for you is if, if this is a, an uncomfortable message or if you get mad at me, look, trust, when you leave today, just forget about it. Just forget about it. Seriously, uh, there, there are, uh, there are um, theologians that I disagree with, and, uh, and I know I disagree with them. And I used to listen to them kind of taking notes like, oh, oh, they got that wrong. Oh, oh, oh. And, uh, but when I grew up, I listened to them now. I really do. I listen to them, and I enjoy listening because I, I want to know, how did you reach that conclusion scripturally? And I learn all kinds of stuff. And when we all get to heaven, you know, the Lord will tell him Randy was right. But until then, <laughs> or he'll tell me, you should have listened to him. But either way, the point is, man, we're grownups here. So if, if, if you're uncomfortable with it or, or don't, don't, don't be like, oh, I'm never coming to that church again. Ah, stop it. Uh, I hadn't preached on this since 2015. So uh, you, you come back and uh, I'll tell you, next week the preaching will be way better. It'll just be way, way, way better. I promise you this. Uh, we don't preach on it nearly as much as Jesus did. The Bible actually speaks to it more than almost anything. Twice as much as heaven and hell, Jesus talked about money and resources. But uh, guys like me, we get uncomfortable because we know it's going to look kind of, it can, it can look and feel, so we just avoid it. I cannot avoid it. You need to hear me. My responsibility before God, what I stand before God daily and what I'll give an account for, my job is to prepare and equip you spiritually for the day that we live in and for the days that are coming. And we can't, I can't do that without talking about this topic because it's so central to all of our lives. And so take a deep breath and I don't just, just don't just, you're going to be fine. I promise you're, you're going to be fine. There's a reason though that it's touchy. And I'll, I'll tell you, and that's my, my point. This is the first point. I don't have a, a text for you. I'm just going to throw a bunch of scripture at you. And I promise you at the end of this, you can say a lot, but you can't say it's not biblical. I'm just going to put it out there like that, you know. Uh, so why is this so sensitive? And, and by the way, let me, before I get into that first point, um, on our Wednesday nights, we're going to have, for, for October, we're going to have practicals on financial management. Some encouragement for you, but also some folks here that uh, handle money really well and teach it really well to deal with, man, how do I clean up my budget? How do I figure out how to knock out all of my debt? We're gonna, we wanna teach you how to do that. So come on our Wednesday nights at 6.30 to our Kingdom Life and in the month of uh, September. That's what we're gonna be talking about, all right? But why is it so sensitive? And here's point number one, if you're taking notes, Money is God's number one competitor for first place in your life. That's why. That's why it's so sensitive, because money is a God, and it's the top competitor for God in believers' lives. And uh, for, for many of us, if we were asked, look, 
uh, entrust God with your money or you stay in charge of it. And, and, and listen, there's lots of ungodly people who make billions and do just fine. You, you can do okay uh, with, uh, without God blessing your finances. You can. Here's what you can't do. I, I don't believe there's anything, uh, I don't believe financial security is actually possible without God. Yeah, what about Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and all these guys? I, I, I honestly don't believe that in their hearts they really are at peace to go, now, I've, I've actually made enough now that I don't have to worry about it. I mean, there's talk about the, the de-dollarization of earth here, and I think it's way, way, I frankly think it's, it's, it's a ways off. Right now, the American dollar is backing at about 60%, all, all nations. I don't think we're immediately... Uh, need to be concerned. I don't think, but 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 I keep asking. Uh, I keep asking uh, minds, um, financial minds. What what would this mean? And basically, the answer is always the same. It, we're too big to fail. I, I hear that. I, I don't know about that. I've asked financial minds. What does the fact? I mean, when does a nation go broke? I mean, how do how does a nation? And I I, I kind of hear the same thing. You know, you know, we're too big to fail, or I don't know, gang. I, Here's what I know. Uh, there's a bunch I don't know, and there's a bunch a lot of folks don't know. What I do know is this. I would rather have God securing my future financially than counting on me to figure out what does the de-dollarization of earth look like. And I'm, I'm not trying to threaten, and I, I'm not trying to start a conspiracy theory. I'm not prophesying. I'm just saying these are the facts on the table. We've got to look at them. Uh, so I'm inviting you into the world that I've entered, and I will tell you, uh, money... Here's how Jesus said it. Money is the number one competitor. So when I start talking about it, I'm dealing with one of your gods. You know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with one of your gods. So uh, if, if you've not put God in front of that one, we get a little touchy. And, uh, and so let the, let, the, let, the, let the discomfort maybe awaken something to go, wait a minute, do I have God first? Uh, Jesus said it like this. Luke 16, 13 says, no servant can serve two masters. And so here's what he's talking about money. Money's a master. It's an owner. You worship it. For either he will hate the one and love the other, there's that tension between the two you're feeling, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You'll give a whole lot more time and effort to one than the other. Ooh, uh, this is pretty real here. You cannot serve God and mammon. Can't serve God and mammon. What is mammon? Mammon was a, an idol, uh, the, the, the god of riches, a Syrian god of riches that the Babylonians worshiped. Babylonian, what does that mean? I'm doing a lot of study on Babylon right now. I'm writing out of the book of Daniel for our, our January series. So I'm having the hardest time not preaching Daniel to you, but put that aside. I jump on an airplane as soon as this service ends to go lock in a hotel so I can finish writing all that we're going to need to be for our, our manuals for the first of the year. So y'all pray for me this week. But uh, so... Uh, these, these two masters, what is, what is Babylon? Babylon means sown in confusion. And it, so if, if there's confusion over your finances, right now, I, I want you to know, it, it could be because you've got the, the, you don't have God sitting over your finances. And uh, I want to say something. You say, we, we used to say it this way. You need to make God first. <clears throat> well, I look at this, and it's true. And I understand the context of it, but the truth is you and I actually never, we don't actually have the power to make God first. <laughs> God makes himself first. We, we acknowledge what already is. We don't actually go, Lord, I think I'm going to give you first place. I'm going to let you win this one. He doesn't, he doesn't need me. He doesn't need my money. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your heart. I'm telling you, he is a needless God. He does not need us. So he's God all by himself with our worship and without it. He's, he's, Jesus. he's in first place, like it or not. And uh, what we do, though, is we start to find places in our life where, we're, we ha where he's not first. And as the Holy Spirit raises that, we bring that under. I want to show you just what people are willing to do. This is what, this is what worship looks like, by the way. Uh, found a book. 1992 now is, is when this was, so I would love to see this done now. The book is called uh, The Day America Told the Truth. The Day America Told the Truth. 
and it's an ethics business book, and uh, they were asking questions. Here's, here's one of the questions. What would you be willing to give up for $10 million? Is it hazy in here? Am I going blind? Somebody lay hands on me. It's happening. Okay. You guys, no smoking. Now, I understand we got the haze machine back there. What would you be willing to give up for a million dollars? All right, ready for this? 25%, I'd abandon my family. Give me the 10 million. See ya. <laughs> to their families. I love my wife and kids. And I, and I, I see husbands and wives looking at each other like, We have groups for that. 23% would become a prostitute for a week. Become a prostitute, $10 million. 16 would give up their American citizenship, 16%. 10%, that, these are people that hadn't traveled, I'll tell you that. 10% would lie or withhold evidence and allow a murderer to go free. For 10 million, for 10 for 10 million, 7% of people would kill a stranger, commit murder. 3% would put up their children for adoption. I actually think that's a low number. <laughs> I think, mean, you know, there were days for free. Everybody's been there, so. Here's what I want you to do. And so what, what you're seeing there is wh what would you do for? That's what worship is. That, that, that's, that's, I mean, what would you do f for God? What would you do for money? What, what are you more willing to sacrifice for? This, this kind of gets down and dirty right into the middle of our, our life and heart. And, it, and you can start to feel why this is God's number one competitor. And here's the thing. God will bless your, your, your finances if he's number one. But you say, Pastor, I'm saved. Uh, won't God just bless me anyway? No. No, he won't. God is not going to support a competitive God. He's not going to go, oh, I'm number two, but ah, let me just throw you a little more gas there. He's not going to support your worship of another God. It breaks everything about him. So and I'd say this about any area of your life, which you'll hear in this message Anything, and I've been asking God pretty desperately, Lord, is there, is there anything in my life where you're not number one? Okay, just keep that question in mind here. Uh, here, Hebrews, and I called it H-E-B this morning, I'll tell you. <laughs> H-E-B 13, 5, and 6 says this, keep your lives free from the love of money. Keep your lives free from it. it, it, it we all need money. Keep it from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. And I know I got some single moms here. I got some families that are in financial yeah. tough situations. And I really believe that God, when I, when I read that verse this morning, I really believe there's folks here that you, I want you to take this away. This might be all you need to hear from the message because you're feeling like it's just hopeless. God has forgotten about me. You need to hear. God brought you here to hear this. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So you can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. Amen. Everybody say this with me. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. There are times when I have had to go to battle with anxieties or pressures or things that look impossible what I do is I'll repeat that, I'll repeat the scripture until I believe it. The Lord is my helper, I do not need to be afraid. That, that, say it until it actually gets in you, until you can say it like, you know what? The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid, and I can say that with confidence. Sometimes you've got to go to war with the word, that's a sword, that's what it is, the sword of the spirit, and swing till you cut that thing in little bitty pieces, swing till you win, so... Uh, but anyway, I wanted somebody to really hear that. So, give you a little testimony. Uh, up, up into, I, I, I've tithed my entire life. What's a tithe? Tithe is 10%. That's what tithe means, 10%. My mother, when I got my first uh, allowance, dollar, uh, she, she, she said, a dime belongs to God. And I, I mean, since childhood, 
I've given the tithe. So one of the advantages that I have, I know when I lay, and I'm not laying anything on you, but when I present this, you can think 10%? Just to get our budget set to do that's gonna be a struggle. I understand. Head that way. Head that way. One of the things that, that I appreciate in good, good parenting, I had good parenting. I never had to build this into my budget. I, I just knew 10% goes to God. So I'd take my little dime and uh, you know drop it in the plate, tink, and you know, it felt good. So uh, I get, we get married, and I get into the, the 90s and the uh, 80s and 90s, and uh, I told you last week, I would do my bills, and then I'd see what was left over, and I, you know, had that guilty feeling, so I'd write God out his check, kick, 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 kick. there's your stinking check, and, and uh, you know, just doing it very, very legal, and again, under the law, you had to do it or you got punished. Under grace, you're invited to do it out of a heart of trust, and it exposes it. It exposes your heart. <laughs> you can check your checkbook to, see, to check your heart. The scripture says, where your treasure is, there you, there's your heart. And I can tell you, wherever your heart goes, your treasure can follow that too. So this, that, but that's how I did it. And let me read you. This was, this was how I felt having tithed for a number of years. This is Haggai now. This is how I felt. It says, you've planted, Randy, much, but you harvest little. Yeah. You eat, but you're not satisfied. Yes. You drink, but you're still thirsty. So here, here's the deal. I, I was quoting Malachi to God every week. You said you would open the windows of heaven and pour a blessing that I cannot contain. I don't see any blessing. I mean, holy like that. I mean, seriously, I was just that, get that agitated. Money has that effect on you. Have you noticed? You drink, but you're still thirsty. You put on clothes, but you cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. Anyone? But, but Pastor, I'm giving. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Consider your ways, another version says. Now go up to the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. What, 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 does, what is he saying there? He's saying, you've spent all your time and money on yourself and your house, I want you to bring it to me first. Come take care of me first. Uh, for Matthew 6, <clears throat> 33, you all would know it. <clears throat> Jesus is speaking, and he, what he's talking about is financial worry. He says the way to get rid of financial worry. you worried about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, and what you're going to wear. How are you going to pay for that? What's the financial future going to be? Jesus says, follow me. Here's how you do it. Seek first the kingdom first. Everybody say first. first. Seek first the kingdom. What does that mean? What does the king say about this matter? What does the king say about my finances? And his righteousness. What does that mean? Well, Pastor, I'm positionally righteous because of Jesus. That's correct. You're positionally righteous. This is speaking of conditional or behavioral righteousness. In other words, how am I supposed to act according to the Bible? Wait a, wait a minute, I don't have to behave any way under grace. I have it your way, but actually it still matters. It doesn't keep you saved, but it has everything to do with your condition on this earth. There's a reason to obey. I'll just, one, one, in, in January, I'm gonna preach it till look back. the roof catches on fire. Thank God we're building another church. Uh, and that is this. When we look at the Bible, we have gotten way away from this. I mean, just using grace as the excuse. Uh, we've, over, we've overrun that. Yeah. We, we look at the Bible, and if we read something we don't like, we just think, well, grace covers. We have got to come back to this. When I see it in Scripture, like it or not, I do it. I obey. Yeah. Period. If I see it in Scripture, like it or not, Agree or don't agree. If all you do is, is pick and choose, and I'm so off, far off my message right now. If all we do is pick and choose, we're basically worshiping a, a glorified version of ourselves. You're not worshiping God. Either God calls the shots or he does not. Okay, that's January. Let me get back to this. All right. So th this, was, this was me. I'm tithing, but I'm not seeing anything of it. I'm screaming at, I'm literally going in, in the closet and screaming, God, what, where is this? This is when it turned around. This is where it turned around. Now, here's the example. 
And by the way, this was yesterday morning. The Holy Spirit raised this picture in my mind. I, I told him, I laughed. I said, you, you're the best teacher. I mean, you should make a living at this. You're really good. <laughs> Uh, this is just this is just so powerful. I just I think uh, here's the deal. So uh, back in uh, the spring, us and AT and T, uh, we were having fellowship and uh, trying to work some things out. And they said, "Hey, uh, we can lower your bill and bring fiber to your house." I'm thinking, "All right, we we, do. we, we can we could use more fiber." And uh, what, what does that mean? And uh, anyway, so they said, "Yeah, fiber. Op, you know, you do all your digital information through fiber." Fine, whatever that means. I just it made my bill go down. That's what I was happy about. So all the guys show up and they're 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 pounding the house out and doing whatever they got to do to bring fiber to the house. And I asked the guy. I said, "Look, in layman's terms, what what am I purchasing here? What what is it? How am I benefiting here?" And he starts talking megabytes and gigabytes and this. And I said, "What, what the heck, I, bro? Speak English, man." <laughs> and uh, he said, "Okay, Mr. Harvey, here's the deal. Up to this point." All of your information has come to you uh, in something about the size of a water hose. So it's very crimped and there's, it's very limited what can come through there. He, he said, what we're doing is going to be 300 megabytes a second. I said, I, st- I don't get it. Uh, what's a megabyte? He said, million, Mr. Harvey. A million, 300 million bytes. What are we biting? I still don't get it. He said, look, <laughs> here's the deal. You had the water hose, now you're going to have a pipeline. And you don't even own enough stuff, Mr. Harvey, to slow this down. There's the, you don't have, and we got a TV in every room. He said, no, we're, uh, fiber means pipeline. So I was like, thank you, I can understand that. And so here's the deal. We, with the AT&T backs up their pipeline, whatever that means, plugs it into my house. I got all these smart TVs, smarter than anything. It's everywhere. Click it all on. Nothing. I've paid for a pipeline. I got these high dollar TVs that are supposed to be smart and uh, everything, everything in our house runs on it, nothing. And uh, so I'm looking at him and he says, all right, we have this one little thing. That that pipeline and that receiver, they can't talk until you get this, just just, just a small little adjustment. It's gonna make it all happen. One small little adjustment. What is that, sir? Password. You just gotta put the password on. You go up to the router, there's a password about that long. <laughs> you cannot read it with these eyeballs. X, J, P, R, P sign, soul sign, um, emoji, 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 number sign, just something super long like that. So I'm quoting it to him, he's putting it in, and all of a sudden in my main TV, there's a little circle, ying, 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 and a check mark, ping, ping. You're online now. It's like, hallelujah. Man, we go room to room, putting that password. Amazing. This one password, and I'm putting it in, and everywhere, we put it into the, to the uh, copier. Bing, it comes on. Our phones, bing. Computer, bing. Man, all of a sudden, the whole house starts sliding. Uh, uh, toilets start flushing, and <laughs> hair dryers start going off, and TVs are going on, and Alexa's praying in tongues. I mean, it's just fantastic. <laughs> One, just that one adjustment, and all of a sudden, the receiver was able to get what was coming through the pipeline. Amen. Check it. This is a pipeline, guys. It's a pipeline of promises, principles, and wisdom. You are a smart TV. You're a receiver. But you're in Haggai. You've got the pipeline, you're a receiver, but nothing's coming through the line. What's missing? Thank you. The password. What Pastor Stacy and I learned was when we actually discovered the password, everything changed for us, both financially and in every other area. Where if you were God? I mean, you can't hardly find the password on the back of your modem. But where, if you were God, would you put the password to this? This is brilliant. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit's just brilliant. Open your Bibles if you own a real one or a digital one. Digital ones, I think they're 75% as powerful as this, but it'll work. 
the password. God put the password in the first four words of every single Bible. In the beginning, God, that's your password for everything in your life. In the beginning, God, that's the answer. That opens the pipeline. That causes you to go wing, 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 chink, chink, bing, bing, bing. You're online. When God is at the beginning, bing, 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 you're online. We have lived our lives this way. This is for finances. This is for life, gang. In every place that we can figure out how to make him first, at the first, our first check, now we don't do checks, but the first thing that leaves our account isn't to, to Nordstrom because Nordstrom can't bless my finances and it isn't to AT&T. They certainly can't, although they have quite the pipeline coming to you. They can't bless my finances. The very first thing, in the beginning, God, the first check that, that we, we give, we don't pay our tithes, by the way. You return your tithes. You'll see in a second, the tithe belonged to God. The first, the first thing, it belongs to God. We, not legally, but with great excitement, we bring the very first one. And I'll explain why that's important. The first of my day, in the beginning of every day, God, I am up here before anything, before I see humans, before I see daylight, before I see anything. In the beginning, God, and it's changed my life. In our marriage, in the beginning, it's God. I, I come around the bed before I leave to come up here and pray. I put my hand on her chest. She puts her hand on my hand, and we, we honor God. We honor Jesus, and we welcome the Holy Spirit. And we speak blessing on our day. We don't have conversation. We don't talk about the kids or the worries or anything. We just, God. I leave, I come up here, God. At the beginning, what I'm going to write, as soon as I, I leave here in, in a few minutes, I'm going to write 37 days. Do you know where that was birthed? Right when I was getting this rev rev revelation about the blessed life. Why 37 days? It's the first tenth of the year. In the beginning of every year, God. It's the password, guys. I'm telling you this. You guys, at the beginning of every week, where are y'all? God. This is the first day of the week, by the way. In the beginning, God. The first of, our, of, of, the, of the tithes we receive into the church, the first 10% goes into the storehouse and the first checks to leave here at the first of the month, go to our missionaries. It goes out. That is our giving to benevolence, to missionaries, uh, to, to projects. It goes out. Why? In the beginning, God. If God has first place, everything else will come into order. If he does not have first place. Pastor, it sounds like you're being all rigid about it. It really isn't. It's actually, I can tell you as well, it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. It's become very, very nice. You know what? This may seem a little rigid. I grow tomatoes every year. I tell you about them. In the beginning, the first tomatoes, I'm not joking, our first tomatoes, we will not eat them. We give them away, usually to you, Zondra, but we give our first tomatoes away. It, Pastor, it sounds like you're getting a little weird. I'm going to lean weird on this one because it so changed our lives. It so changed our lives. It's like, Lord... I don't know, there's probably stuff I didn't even mention, but here's, here's, here's the prayer now, gang. I've been praying this, and I encourage you, any place there's chaos, it may be that there isn't order in your life. Ask God, Lord, how do I make you first here? Because in the beginning, there's your password. That opens that pipeline. We've been blessed with vacations, and I can't say it because some, some of you have given them. I mean, we've been blessed with trips, and it's not about stuff. It isn't. I'm just saying the things I used to think you know, pour out, open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing you cannot contain. The things I used to think that could mean, and it doesn't mean just luxuries, and I don't know what blessing looks like between you and God. I don't know what's in your heart. I don't know what he's put in your heart, and I don't know what he's going to fulfill. I can tell you this. It'll be good. Amen. But for us, I mean, 
Man, I've gotten to drive cars I used to dream about, and I, and I don't think I'm anything. I'm not worthy of any of this, God. I don't think I'm some big anything. I'm not anything. I'm nothing. I'm a blessed man. That I am. I'm a blessed man. And I, man, I, I, everything I own, I, I say I own it. I hold it loosely. I'm a steward because I recognize I, I, nothing, no, no brilliance got me anything. The blessing and the favor of God has. And I walk in great fear, great reverence of God to say, Lord, you, you've entrusted something to me. Lord, help me. Help me to do this well. Gang, it's a, a, enough. I want, you, I want to hear you. And if you're, if you're being intrigued to say, you know what? Our finance have not been in order. And I'm, I'm beginning to get stirred in my heart. I, I want to invite you to think in terms of tithing this way. I'm going to bring our first and our best. I'm bringing the, fir the first check. Some of you have been tithing your whole life and been wondering, Lord, I don't see any blessing. This, this may sound rigid, but I want to encourage you. Give it first. Why? Because when you do it at first, it takes faith. If you pay the bills and then give God, which is what I was doing, you pay the bills and then throw God what you can put together, it took no faith. If you give it first, you're starting to walk in faith. You know, it isn't the 10% that brings God's blessing. It's not the percentage. It's the position. That's what releases his blessing. I'm, I'm telling you of something I've walked in now for 20 years. Our church has walked in it. Let me, uh, let me bring this down now. Oh, yeah, God, I got to get this in. I'm so sorry. What is the purpose of tithing? The purpose of tithing. Deuteronomy 14, 23 says this. Bring the tithe to eat before the Lord your God at this place, at the place he shall choose as his sanctuary. That's where it goes. This applies to your tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil, the firstborn of your flocks and herds. The purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your lives. That's what the Bible says. That's the purpose of it. If you can get your, your, your finances to God first, everything else is pretty easy, guys. That's that, but biblically, that's the purpose to teach you and me. Put God first. Another thing about the tithe. Uh, some of you, uh, how many of you do spiritual warfare? You'd know what I mean by that. Uh, for some, what that means is go yell at the devil. And he particularly is irritated with a southern uh, kind of Pentecostal sound. He particularly hates that, like, devil. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Bring it down to strong man. You're coming down. I mean, give it a little of that. Particularly agitates you. The scripture says that you don't have, there are multiple places in your life where you don't have to speak to the devil to do warfare. You don't take him on. You get under where the protection is. Jesus when God was speaking of the tithe, I mean, here's what he says. Uh, Malachi 3, can't get away from tithing without talking about Malachi. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this. Just test me. Give it a shot. Says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven, pour out blessing that you cannot, that, that there will not be room enough for you to receive it. Man, that right there ought to get, that gets my attention. But look at this. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Yeah. How cool is that? When God says, Randy, y'all get back here. Stacey, y'all get back here. You put your family back here. Hey, you little jerk. <laughs> you go get everything you stole from Pastor Randy. You go get it right now. In fact, you go seven times. You, you better bring back more than you took. And you better scoot and get it quick, boy. I got this. I got that. You don't need to yell at him. I got this. When we sang about it, the battle is the Lord. How, how, how and when is the battle's the Lord? It's when we're under his covering. You, you don't need to holler at the devil. God's pretty good at this. He will whip him for you. Bring your tithes into the storehouse. I'll do the rebuking. Take the deal, guys. I just take the deal. All right. What's the principle? What's the principle here? And I'll, I'll, I'll call it a day here. 
This is the principle that drives it. It's called the principle of the first. It's all through the scripture, the, the principle of the first. You remember uh, Cain and Abel. Uh, God liked one of their, their uh, offerings, didn't like the other one. Scripture says this, that Cain, in the fullness of time, gave from some of the things he had grown, in the fullness of time. But Abel, from the first crops, brought an offering to the Lord. On Abel, God had favor, but he chastened Cain. Why? I've heard theologians say, well, because one brought blood and one brought, one brought um, corn and whatever he was raising. That wasn't it. It was first. It was what came first. Abel said, God, you're first. Here's the principle, but you'll see it all through Scripture. Uh, the first sacrifice redeems the rest. The first sacrifice redeems the rest. Exodus uh, 13, 2, and I'm gonna do this very quickly. Uh, God says, consecrate to me the firstborn. Everybody say firstborn. First. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, this is emphatic, it is mine. Get that in your head. The first, he doesn't say, I'd like to borrow it. He says, no, it is mine. Man, when you start to look at your life and realize the first, you're not you're not paying it. To, it belongs to him. You return it to him. It is mine. Jump on down. He's continuing in this conversation with Israel. Exodus 13, 12 now. It says, you shall set apart to the Lord all that opens the womb. That is the firstborn that comes from an animal which uh, you have. The males shall be the Lord's. Emphatic again. But every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem. Everybody say redeem. Firstborn of a donkey, you shall redeem with a lamb. If you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. You're going to lose it anyway. And all the firstborn of man among your sons, you shall redeem. Okay, let's, what, what in the world's going on with all that? Basically, when a child's born, uh, you're to take a firstborn lamb, sacrifice it to God. This is what, what their culture was. Sacrifice it to God. You're redeeming that child. You're redeeming that child. However, how do you know which of your animals to break their neck and how many of you, how many of you know uh, which ones to redeem and how do you know what to sacrifice? Well, here's the deal. The Hebrew mind would have heard, when they heard the word donkey, they would have known that's unclean. That goes in a category. That's unclean. When they heard the word lamb, they knew this, that's clean. And what God was teaching them was the principle that governs all of his kingdom, and that is the clean has to be sacrificed if you're going to redeem the unclean. If you don't redeem the unclean, you break its neck and it has to go. Are y'all tracking with me? So when you, you got a, a new donkey, it's just been born. If you want to keep it, you got to go get a firstborn lamb, a clean, and you got to sacrifice its life so that you can buy back the right for this unclean to live. Now, I know all of you are already ahead of me. When Jesus, when Jesus was born, was he a clean or an unclean? He was a clean. He was born of a woman, but he came from the seed of God. He lived perfectly. And since Adam, the first and only one to be born a clean, which answers my second question is, when you and I were born, were we born a clean or an unclean? We were unclean. There was no hope for us unless we were doomed to have our neck broke, if you will, to be, uh, to be killed and done away with unless a clean could be sacrificed so that we could be redeemed. God himself held himself to the standard and the principle to which you and I are being called even in this moment when he saw all the world born unclean. Pastor, I'm offended that you would say I'm unclean. Okay, just go look at two, just go spend some time with some two and three-year-olds. This is the word you will hear. Mine. It's mine. No, it's mine. It's mine. Mine, it's mine, it's mine. It's mine, it's mine. Nobody has to teach them to be selfish. They're born that way, and so are you. 
Now, we as grown-ups don't go, my, but we think it. Don't kid each other here. <laughs> Yank the covers right off of this thing. It's not play. We are born with an unclean nature, and the only response to that is for us to be eternally damned except God himself. The Lamb of God, the firstborn of God. God said, I want to redeem them all. The only way to redeem the rest is to give the first and the best clean. That's the only way. That's the only way it's possible. And so Jesus took his son, the Lamb of God, crucified him, sacrificed, so that redemption was made available for all of us who are unclean. Jesus was God's tithe. When you bring the first to God, what you are doing is redeeming the rest. You're redeeming the rest. And that's how God brought all of us. This is a principle. This, this rest, this is, this is kingdom talk that we're hearing here. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. But some of it has been revealed. And this powerful principle in all areas of your life, here's the beautiful thing. Do I have to? No, you don't have to. Again, when, you, listen, when I want to make my father proud, I try to emulate what he does. I love God. I love him. I want, I, you know, I'm always saying, hey, Dad, look at me. Look at me, Dad. I'm going to hit the ball for you, Dad. I, 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 the, the, the Holy Spirit has come inside of me. and He's come inside of you when you got saved. And inside of you is crying, Abba, Father, Daddy, God, watch me. Watch me hit the ball. Watch me do this. And what makes him proud is when we emulate him. Yes. And when he shows us how to do it, it's a great invitation. It's, it's not a you have to, it's a make me proud. Yes. I want to bless you. I want yes. to bless you. When we see that he committed his only son so that the unclean, and he calls us in every area. It's really not that hard. This, the money, it, I know we've got to do some budgeting and stuff, but you can do it, gang. I invite you. Gang, for all of you, and for those of you that are here that, that maybe are not saved or this seems foreign to you, God does not call us to abandon all other loves to be saved. You can still love. I love the Cowboys. I like the Cowboys. I used to love them. I love football. It's painful. Pray for me. You know what? You, you may be here and you say, do, do, Pastor, do I have to give up my Louis Vuitton? No. Enjoy it. You can love it. You can love travel. You can love pizza. You can love a big house. God isn't bothered. Trust me, his house is bigger than yours. He's not bothered by your loves. It's not that you can't love other things. When you get saved, you don't have to abandon those loves, but everything is reoriented, reordered and reoriented. And God then becomes the first love. When he's the first love, the other loves will fall in order. You can't love anything before him. The very first commandment was this. You shall have no other gods before me. You can have money. It just can't be before me. When God is first, everything falls in line. There's folks in here today that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now, and you're wondering what that is. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And today, the Father has come to your orphanage because that's what you are. That's what I was. I had an orphan spirit that always was wondering, surely somebody loves me. Surely there's more to this life than this. And what it is is you're looking for your real father. And this moment right now is a holy moment because the Holy Spirit is writing. There's people that are watching right now. The Holy Spirit is awakening. Wait a minute. My father's at the orphanage and you're, you're, you're thinking... Take me, take me out of this orphanage. If you just raise your hand and say, take me today, you can be saved. That's what salvation is. It's you, you actually meet your real father, your spirit, and your spirit is born again, and you become part of his family. The spirit of adoption comes to rest in you, and you realize 
I know my daddy. I finally met my daddy. I'd like you to all bow your heads, close your eyes, praying with me. If you're here today and you want to give your life to Christ Jesus, this is your opportunity. Gang, you're not promised another opportunity. Do it now. Today is the day of salvation. Do it now. Everybody praying after me. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you and I'm fully responsible. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ. He lived for me. He bled for me. He died for me. He's the Lamb of God. He took my place. I believe you raised him from the dead. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you. I make you first. I make you Lord and King. I give you my life. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for saving me. Father, I pray for every person right now that just gave their life to Christ. Holy Spirit, thank you that you're breathing on them. You're touching them. You're sealing them, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you seal us. I pray for every person as well who's saying, God, you've shown me something where my life's not under and you're not first. Would you show me how? Would you help me, Lord? I pray for every financial chaotic situation. Lord, that you would intervene right now by your grace. Lord, as men and women begin to turn towards you, God. Lord, I can't give 10%. I can give two. I can make a change. But Lord, help me. Right now, I thank you that there's grace. Lord, hearts are turning to say, Lord, I want to bring my life and make you first. Whatever area he's showing to you, just ask him to help you. Right now, Father, I speak blessing on every financial circumstance right now. That is that, God, you would come and get involved and begin to direct and call to obedience in any place where we are out of line with you. And I thank you for order, order over finances and financial situations now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Come on, Monica. God bless you guys. Wasn't that an awesome word? That was so good. The prayer team can make their way up. Anybody that needs prayer, we want to say don't wait, don't hesitate to come up for prayer. We have the prayer team that are making their way up, and they're here to pray over you, pray with you. The Bible says that when two are agreeing on one thing, there he is. And God's asking us to ask him. He's asking us to, to ask him, not for little things, but he's saying, ask me something big to make me look like I'm a big God because he is a big God and he's here to meet your need. Yes. Um, so please don't wait. Please come up. Also, if you said yes to Jesus and you've accepted him into your heart and you said that prayer and you, you said yes, there's this card on the back of your seat in the back front pocket of the seat. Words are hard sometimes. Um, so... On the back of this, there is a little checked little box that you can check where it says, I said yes. And if you did, we have a gift for you at the Connect desk in the lobby. And we would love for you to come and bring this card with us for us so that way we could give you that gift. And also, I don't want to um, miss this opportunity to tell you about the life group launch that you've seen outside. Those are tables. Maybe you didn't know what it was about, but it's about our life groups. And if you are interested in joining and getting connected with people here at the church, we would love to get to know you. And um, go by, go by and visit each table. And we have this little card that you can pick up at the table. And if you um, fill out each little box here that said that you've gone to visit five tables, then you can enter this card into a drawing. So I don't want you guys to forget about that. It's really important. And the other thing I want to also talk about is our opportunity to give, which is also on the screens behind me. And there's also a box that's located in the back wall where you can slip in your little tithe and offering if you would like to do that as well. So I would like for us to um, just close and serve it, the service with um, a prayer. So if you don't mind, just close your eyes. Let me just pray over you and pray over our final act of worship, and that's our tithes and offerings. And Lord, I just thank you, Father, that 
that you are here, that you hear our prayers, you know our heart, you know what we think before we even think it, Lord. And Father, whatever the needs that we've brought here, Father, I thank you that the word that was said this morning resonated, Lord God, into our hearts. That we are here to serve you, to bring forth our first fruits, Lord God, to give you our best, Father. And I just thank you that you honor our obedience, Lord God. And Father, I just pray for each and every one of us here that you would just go forth and um, continue to fight our battles to, to, that you have not left us, that you're with us, Lord God, this week. I thank you that you are um, ordering our steps, Lord God. And I pray blessings over our week. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, you guys are dismissed.